Uh, interesting day yesterday. Um, NEFA due to issue advice on easing restrictions uh, later today, but interesting uh, comments from uh, Tony Honan backing the reopening of events for the vaccinated. Uh, St- Stephen Donnelly, the health minister, uh, also said he hopes all COVID restrictions will be lifted by Christmas and Neffet going even further Tony Holland saying he hopes that might happen sooner than that we are joined now by the Minister for Health uh, Stephen Donnelly uh, Minister thank you f- for joining us given your remarks yesterday and indeed those of Tony Holland are we in the end game not of Covid obviously which will be with us for a long time to come but of the pandemic and those hugely intrusive restrictions Good morning Shane morning. The short answer is let's hope so This disease has torn up everybody's best laid plans many times, particularly with the variants. But notwithstanding, you know, a a new variant arriving that can evade vaccines or or, or whatever uh, could come. Certainly the question I was asked yesterday was, would I see the restrictions lifted by Christmas? I I think they will be lifted by Christmas. uh, And I I, I would hope that they're lifted earlier than Christmas. It's fair to say that most of the economy, most of society is currently open, but there are still measures in place around religious events, around uh, arts and entertainment, uh, indoor sports, and some other things that are still causing uh, real problems. And what we want to do now is what we've done the whole way through, which is to say we're going to open up as quickly as we can, but in a way that is safe and critically that means that people don't have to close back down again. OK, uh, can we talk about um, Tony Holland's comments about um, live events, he basically backing reopening of events for the vaccinated and saying, you know, he didn't have a problem with electric picnic uh, going ahead, for example. Do you share that? Do you, would you, do you think something like electric picnic should go ahead? I'd prefer not to not to comment on an individual event. I don't think it would be fair on the sector and uh, and on the organisers okay. for me to comment on an fair individual enough. event. But I, I certainly would strongly support the view that uh, groups of vaccinated people are in a much better place in terms of COVID than unvaccinated people. Why? Because transmission of the disease amongst groups of vaccinated people is substantially lower. And for anyone that does get it, obviously the vaccines provide um, very, very high levels of protection. You'll remember, Shane, towards the end of July, we applied exactly these principles right across the country to bars and restaurants. Now, if you recall, I brought the bill into the doll. There was an awful lot of political opposition to us um, at the time. It's working well. I think it's fair to say that the public are behind us. And given how that has worked and, and given where the disease is and given the success of the vaccine programme, uh, it's certainly something that a cabinet can look at uh, and consider. And I know that it's something that the sector themselves, who've had a, a horrific time, uh, are calling for as well. OK, sh- should we move and should you move to ease restrictions on live events pretty quickly? I suppose as well, given what Tony Holohan said, is it time to do that? Well, let, let's see. That really is a matter for Cabinet uh, and the COVID committee is meeting on Friday. So I, I don't want to, to preempt that. But certainly right now, there's already a mechanism in place. They've used it very well in the sports sector, which is at pilots of, you know, steadily increasing numbers. It hasn't been applied as much in the arts sector. I think it, it still can be. I think it still should be. And that's something that can happen right now. It doesn't require any additional uh, government decisions. But certainly, based Based on the conversations I've been having with the Chief Medical Officer uh, over the past while, uh, there are options. I think options the sector would be quite excited by uh, around fully vaccinated people. But again, these are ultimately decisions that government will have to make and I I don't want to preempt any of that. You say excited, they might say sceptical because they've been, you know, they've been waiting a long time and they feel they've kind of been left behind. And and a lot of people would say with, with good reason they would feel that. There's no question but that the sector has had an absolutely brutal time. They were the first to close down. They're the last to open up. It is really unfortunate that it is a, it, it is a facet of the sector um, that, is, that it creates exactly the environments we all want and love, which is around other people in, in close proximity, a lot of the time indoors. Uh, and unfortunately, that is exactly what uh, COVID tr- thrived on. So th- there's no question the sector has had a brutal time and we need to do everything we can to help them open up safely and sustainably. OK, can I ask you, were you surprised at um, uh, Dr Holohan's comments uh, yesterday, for example, on, on concerts, on electric picnic? Were you surprised by those comments? 
Not really. No, it's a, it's a conversation uh, that we've been having in the Department of Health for some time. But we know it's worked well and is continuing yeah. to work well. Some of your colleagues were surprised. That's why I asked the question. Yeah, he, he was asked a direct question uh, by one of the the journalists there at the end of a very long press conference. He was, he was asked a direct question specifically about Electric Picnic. Uh, and uh, as is his way, he, he answered uh, he answered directly and openly. OK, all right. Um, his comments on the All-Ireland Finals that only the vaccinated should go, do you agree? I don't see any changes to the All-Ireland Finals. Uh, you know, he, he was applying the same principle, but the, the finals um, are happening. Uh, they already started and obviously will continue in, in the coming weeks. The capacity at them is already quite large. Uh, I, I think it would be quite the thing to start changing uh, the model for uh, the model for those at this time, but there's already very significant capacity has has been agreed for those finals uh, at this point. And remember, Shane, for example, you know for the for for these kind of matches, there's a lot of children at these matches. A lot yeah. of children haven't been vaccinated, so there would be wider considerations. And um, is the model working though? I mean, we saw and we I've heard, I'm sure you've heard, widespread stories about pubs around Croke Park not checking for vac certs packed pubs um, does that concern you how can we ensure that doesn't happen for example with the football final or with the uh, the women's final coming up it does concern me I think the event itself was run and handled very well in the stadium but but it, it's a, something you and I have discussed and has been discussed since COVID arrived here that it's often not the event itself uh, but the activities that happen before and after the sporting event that caused the that caused the super spreader events. I was concerned by some of the footage that I saw, and I, I would just say a few things. First of all, for people who were who were there and who might might feel that they are at risk, um, particularly if they're not fully vaccinated, go and get a PCR test. They're in every county. It's walk in or drive in. Uh, they're free, they're very, very quick, and they provide an awful lot of peace of mind to people that, that they're safe and that their family and that their friends are safe. And then secondly, just to re-emphasize, the disease is still here. We have the third highest rate in Europe. We're dealing with a highly contagious variant, and we really do need to keep following the basic advice. And then obviously for those who have yet to get vaccinated, yeah. it's an increasingly small number, but it is an important number. I would just I would just ask everyone who has yet to get vaccinated to, to to please do so. Do we need to police this better? Do we need to police those pubs better around All Ireland Day, for example? Look, there's certainly there's certainly an argument for ensuring that there is um, that there is decent enforcement on the uh, on, on the ground. But I think it has largely worked around the country. Uh, it's not working everywhere. I, I, I'm aware. We're all aware of um, some establishments that maybe they're not asking for the COVID pass. But the vast majority of the sector is doing is doing exactly the right thing. The word around cr- the word ar- on Sunday was most places weren't. That's that's anecdotal evidence, but that's what people are saying. Well, well, if that's true, uh, it, it's disappointing, uh, and it's dangerous. Okay, all right. Um, what can we expect from this roadmap? Um, I think we're a week away, and uh, from this roadmap, what else can can we expect from it? Well, what we're going to be looking at in government, obviously I can't preempt government conversations uh, around what details may or may not be in it, but essentially what we, what we want to do next week is provide a very clear roadmap uh, with clear timing for people. Uh, I, I imagine there will be measures which uh, can be relaxed very quickly. I imagine there will be other measures which we might want to wait a period of time, for example, until we get to the... The, the peak of the current surge of the of the Delta variant, and then I also expect recommendations in terms of not restrictions, but some of the public health measures that have worked very very well. For example, mask wearing in higher risk places. That that might be something we continue uh, for some time. Oh, you you think we'll be wearing masks into 2022 in certain situations? Do you? is that what you envisage? I don't know. I'll be talking to um, the chief medical officer this evening, but I, I, I expect that there will be public health advice around some of the basics that have worked well. Uh, there, there may be advice around mask wearing, for example. I know uh, there's been a lot of focus on mask wearing in schools. You know, how, how long should it be put in place for and, and so forth. So I would be reluctant to give uh, dates, uh, you know, uh, in terms of going into next year and so forth. But certainly I would expect through the autumn and through the winter, there will be some of the basic public health measures, uh, advice around those that, that, that okay. have worked so well. 